My life and that of everyone in my community was completely shattered. Living in captivity is to live in a state of constant anxiety and uncertainty. You don't know if you will survive from one moment to the next or what dangers you will have to face. There is no order, no routine, no opportunity for your mind or your body to relax. In some ways, I was lucky. I was able to eventually escape my captors and make it to an internal displacement camp in northern Iraq. Yes, I was relieved. Yes, I was safer. But the grief, the chaos, and the uncertainty while change did not stop. I was still living moment to moment, day to day. I had no ability to enact change, to make my own decisions, to plan. Many of my family members and friends had been murdered, were still missing, or remained in captivity. My home had been destroyed, and, had, and I had no idea what the future held or how to move forward, how to move toward that future. I was surrounded by Yazidis with stories just like mine, who were living in this state of chaos and could not see a way forward. It was in the camps that I decided to begin sharing my story. I needed to act. I needed to seize control of my own life in a time when there was precious little that I had control over. And I knew that without awareness, there is no help. There is no hope. The Yazidi community desperately needed help. We needed help long before the genocide occurred, when the conditions of inequality and discrimination were laying the foundation for violence. We needed immediate help then to escape captivity and as survivors of violence who now found themselves homeless and adrift. And we still need help now as we return to our homeland and attempt to rebuild. It was, it still is, difficult to talk about my experience. I made the decision to do so because it is only by sharing my story that my community my home will receive the help it needs to rebuild, that I will be able to become, as I say in my book, the last girl. The genocide and campaign of conflict-related sexual violence carried out by ISIS against my community, the Yazidis, changed the course of my life. It was the beginning of my path as an advocate. My new life, that of an advocate for conflict-related sexual violence survivors, for the Yazidi community, and for women, girls, and other marginalized people around the world, has also been a time of uncertainty. I was a young girl from a rural village experienced extreme violence and then emigrated to Germany as a refugee. I was in a new country with a new language, new customs, new food, certainly new weather. Every day was a learning experience. But while the uncertainty remained, I was no longer in limbo. 